You decided that you want to incorporate clear aligners in your practice. Maybe you have some experience in orthodontics. Maybe you don't. The good news is these things can be learned. You're wondering, where should I start? How can I be successful? How can I manage to sell the idea to my team? Will I make money with this or lose money? What should I avoid? What should I focus on? All very good questions. In this 45 minutes webinar, I, Stefan Reinhardt, will give you some answers, not all the answers because I don't have all the answers and it would take more time than that. My goal in this presentation is to give you the three things you need to incorporate clear aligners efficiently and successfully in your practice. I will tell you what to avoid by sharing my experience of the last 16 years treating patients with Invisalign clear aligners. And I'll even end the presentation with some homework for you to do. What? You have the time, don't you? Okay, here we go. I have the chance to travel everywhere and lecture and meet dentists from around the world. And what I see is that we all face the same problems. No matter where you practice, our reality is about the same. In these days and time where everything is self-driven, how can we manage to apply the same principles to our practices? Think of how things changed completely over the last couple of years. We, we think that smartphone uh, has been there forever, but it's, it's only since a little more than 10 years that this little piece of technology completely changed our lives. People go crazy now when they're separated from their phone, even for a couple of seconds. Just, just think of when your friends take your phone to look at a picture on it. Think of how you feel. You look at them and you're, you're like, uh, okay, oh, okay, G -g give it back now, G give it back. Our main focus is battery life and Wi-Fi. Do I have a good connection? We're in a plane where there is no Wi-Fi and we can't believe it. We think we're closer to the satellites. The signals should be even better. We should focus on other things, things we understand, things we can control. Clear aligners is a good one. Integrating them is even better. That is something you can do. It is something everybody wants, your patient, your team, and you. What else is like that in dentistry? The market of clear aligners is exponentially increasing and it will just get bigger and bigger. Clear aligners are here to stay. Take Align Technology, makers of Invisalign. They have been in business for more than 20 years. With more than 8 million patients treated, they are one of the biggest, if, if not the biggest, orthodontic company in the world. They have all the tools to help us integrate clear aligners in our practices. But they cannot do it for us. After all, what they do is manufacture clear aligners and scanners. Now, even if they have people on the field ready to help you and, and support you, the decision has to come from you. Once you made that commitment, it is the start of a brand new kind of practice. But it comes with time and effort. Bringing something new is never easy. There's always a learning curve. You have and you need to take that time. Because once it's done, once you understand clear aligners, once you have success with them, once your team sees the benefits for them, for, for your patient or the practice, there is no way you're returning to where you were before. There's no recipe to have success. We would like to have one. Just give me the ingredients, steer everything together, hey, voila, 
you are successful. The recipe would probably look like this. A happy team all the time, happy patients all the time, happy dentist all the time. Now, you, you may need to go to a special store to find this one. Everything you do works all the time. There is no emergencies. All the patients come to their appointments. We are always on time. All patients say yes to all our treatments. We don't even have to propose treatments. They propose it to us. We get along with all team members and everybody loves each other. It's so beautiful. There is never any dirty dishes on the counter of the kitchen. And we don't need a dentist. You know, like me, this is not the reality. Thinking of our reality, what is stopping us from having the ideal self-driven Invisalign clear aligner practice? The reasons we hear are usually marketing, uh, follow-up, knowledge, confidence, consultation, price, money, time, team vision, uh, you decide for your patients, or you have no clear objectives. What are your three main reasons that prevented you from doing more Invisalign or for starting to do it? Because the fact is, selling Invisalign is probably one of the easiest thing in everything you can propose to a patient. And yes, yes, I said selling because I am not giving it. And patients are giving me money for it. Therefore, I am selling it. Doesn't mean I manipulate my patients. The idea is to influence them. We influence people we like, people we love. We influence our children, our spouses, our friends. We want them to take good decisions, decisions that will be beneficial for them. And if it can be for me too, it's even better. When you are manipulating people, everything is about you. You have a hidden agenda. It's all about you, 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 you. What you do with patients is, of course, educate them. Uh, but the idea of educating them is to better influence them. You want what's best for them, but you are in a business relationship with your patients. Therefore, the only relation that works long term are the ones that there's a win-win. If, if it's all about you, it will not work. And if it's all about the patient, it will not work. What's interesting about clear aligners is that it's a vector of reference. And one way of, of measuring if your practice is in good health is by the number of new patients you have every day, every week, every month, every year. Think from the patient side. A lot of them don't even know that you take new patients. How many have asked you over the years, do you still take new patients? They think, they think we don't take new patients. And it is always surprising to me. When was the last time you or your team members asked for a reference to a patient? When is the best time to ask for that? After a surgery? after a root canal? The best time to ask for references is when a patient makes a positive comment. And with Invisalign, there are a lot of that. Patients are happy. They are motivated. They can see and appreciate the results. Do you want a tip? Do you want a tip? Yeah, you have to ask for it. Come on, louder. Do you want a tip? Okay, when a patient tells a positive comment, a testimony, don't say, um, it's nothing, it's natural. Tell them, it's not a coincidence that you feel that way. This is exactly what we are dedicated to do here. And if you know people like you who could benefit from our services, please, do not keep us a secret. Do not keep us a secret. That tells them you are still accepting new patients. In fact, they are more than welcome and even more when they are referred by someone you like. 
Let's go back to the reasons that are stopping us from having the ideal self-driven clear aligner practice. Number one, marketing. There is internal marketing and external marketing. A lot of people focus on the external marketing, but if you are starting with clear aligners, you should focus more on your internal marketing. Meaning you should concentrate on your actual patients first, those who already chose you, know you, and trust you. It's all about trust. It's not money. It's trust. Make it visually evident that there is a new service in town offered in your clinic. Be proud of it. Don't act shy and, and not confident. You have to be confident. I am confident. As long as you learn how to choose your cases, well, that you start with easy cases, you, you will have good results, good success, and you will continue to learn and slowly will do more and more cases as your confidence will grow. Sit in your waiting room. When was the last time you did that? Like a patient, make, make a tour of your clinic. Like a patient, what do you see? Look like a patient, not like you, not like the owner of the place. Is it obvious to the patient that you're offering Invisalign? And even if it is, if you wait that they ask you the question, well, you better think of something else to do because you will wait a long time. The idea is do not spend money on marketing when you start. Start with what you already have in your files. How many class one patients with crowding or spaces do you see in a week? To how many of those could you talk about Invisalign? And that is another thing we are not comfortable doing. How can we ask a patient if they like their crooked teeth? There is a way to do it. Communication is really important the way we communicate. This is not the purpose of this lecture and we spend a lot of time on that in the MOCA team course. Treat your team. Always have a team member in treatment. Use your team to show your patients what it looks like and, and doctor, doctor, doctor. One of the homework you have to do, take a mirror and look not at yourself, look at your teeth. You want to do Invisalign to your patients? How does your own teeth look? You have to walk the talk. Treating your team members will give you and them confidence in the product. You will get used to it and you will develop a workflow that will fit with the culture of your clinic. But remember, even if they are team members and, and you like them and they like you, do not treat them if they are complicated cases. Stick to the easy cases. Think of the learning curve and respect it. Give yourself some time. The relation with your patient is a long-term relationship. And that is really good news. This is, this is why you have to talk about the product every time. Every time you see your patient. Remember one thing. People forget. What did you say? I said, people forget. We think we can talk only one time about something and if the patient doesn't do the treatment, the next time we tell ourselves they were not interested last time and we don't want to talk about it anymore. This is not how we should behave. First, people... I, I'm sorry, I don't remember. What did you say? That's it. First, people forget. Second, your patient will do their treatment not when you decided, but when they decided. They will do it when they feel they need it, when they feel understood. Sometimes we, we talk too much and we should stop and listen, but we'll get back to that later. I have patients to whom we started Invisalign treatment today, but We've been talking to them about it for more than 10 years. What is the difference? Now they're ready. Sometimes it's a long process. It takes time. But you're in a long-term relationship with your patients. Patients have to understand and accept that they have a problem. They have to own that problem. 
It is not your problem, it's their problem. The error we make a lot of times is that we go straight to the solution before we talk about the problem and the consequences. I know, I know this is basic, but those are things that we tend to forget. When we talk to a patient, we have to explain the PCS. PCS, problems, consequences, and solutions. Dear patient, your teeth are shifting. Uh, your teeth are drifting. They are not closing properly together. That is the problem. Your teeth are wearing out. Your gums are bleeding and receding. Now, those are consequences. And to a certain point, we should or could almost stop there. Take a pause. Enjoy the silence. It's long sometimes, four or five seconds of silence. It's very long. Let's, let's try it. Did you enjoy that moment? See, but a couple of you were already starting to ask questions. Let the patient own their problems. That is not only good for Invisalign, it's good for everything you do in dentistry. It's, it's just human. We, we want to fill the silence, but you just expose their problem and, and consequences. There is a good chance they will have questions. And if they don't, do not ask them, do you have any questions? How do you feel when someone asks you that? Especially if that person took 10-15 minutes to explain it to you before. You will feel that you are probably stupid if you have questions, right? Most people will say they have no questions. Do not ask yes or no questions. Ask open questions. Something like, I am now ready for your questions. And wait. Again, four or five seconds. Did you enjoy? When someone tells you that, they invite you to ask questions. It's almost the, the opposite. You feel almost stupid if you don't have any questions. Another way to do it is to ask them after you talked about the problems and consequences, how do you feel about what I just told you? Tell them you are a concern. Use it in your speech, but mean it. Dear patients, I, I, I am concerned about the way your teeth are wearing out. This, even if it doesn't look like it, is all internal marketing. You are using ways to communicate with your patients in order to help them take good decisions. What is marketing doing for us? Look at all the ad advertisement, all the, the money that is put in it. it. There has to be a reason. You cannot act randomly about this. You need to have a protocol on how you will say things, how you will approach your patients. And it has to be the same for everyone. Those in your team who decide to be negative about it or resistant, you will do everything you can to help them find another job. Susie, we decided to take a chance and to let you go to our competitors. Following up, well, I told you already that the majority of patients will want to wait and, and think about it. Um, you need to follow up with them. You, you need a protocol on how you will do it. And it has to be the same for everyone, not a certain way with Janie because she doesn't like to do it and call patient and another way with Julie because she likes to do it and has no problem with that. You need to have a system. And once the patient has entered the system, he has to stay in and follow the same path as everyone. What will be your follow-up? Don't wait three weeks before you reach out to them. Three weeks in today's life is an eternity. Take an agreement with them that you will follow up and call them in two days. And do it. Knowledge and confidence go hand in hand. 
knowledge comes with time. A, a part of it is by learning, by educating yourself. And another part comes from putting your hands at work. If you only do courses and do courses and do courses again, and you never jump in the pool, you will never learn to swim. This is how you will build your confidence. Confidence in yourself first. Then the confidence in the product will come as you do more cases and you see it works. And the confidence in your patients also will come from there. Because we always think and we always hear that, you know, the patients will not be compliant and it's going to be an issue, a major issue. I have worked with Invisalign Clear Aligners for 16 years now. I've done more than a thousand cases. Do you think really that if it would be such an issue that I would have continued doing it? And today my practice is limited to Invisalign only. It's the only thing I do. There has to be a reason other than it's fun. The way you do your consultation is critical, of course, and we'll get back to that in more details later. Money, 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 money. This is the easy answer or excuse that we have all the time. The reason we use to explain why patients don't do their treatment, why they don't accept our treatment plans. The reality is different. When patients refuse what we propose, it's usually because they are not convinced they need it or they don't trust us. Trust is the most important reason why patients will accept treatment. If they trust you, they will do it. Maybe not now, but the day will come. The way you will make the money work is also very important. This is again the subject we cover in our MOCA team course. Time can be a reason. You need to take the time to learn. You need to put some time in this. If you're doing implant, you did not learn to do implant in a half day course. You did not become an expert in root canals after your first molar. You practiced, practiced and practiced and finally you got better and better and you mastered the technique. It's not different with clear aligners, especially if you never did any orthodontics before. There is a lot to learn, but it can be learned and it's worth the time and effort, believe me. Even after more than 20 years doing orthodontic treatments and I'm a general dentist, I still learn. That is the beauty of it. And now it's more exciting than ever with clear liners. It's much easier to integrate, much easier to understand, much easier to delegate. You need your team to get on board if you want this project to work. The acronym team means together everyone achieves more. And it is more true than ever in dentistry, especially in our busy practices. How does your team react usually when you come back all excited from a new course you went to? They look at each other and they say, it will last two weeks and then it will be something else. And I don't blame them. There's a reason why they think like that. We often hear about having a vision or a mission, but these should be changed for having a culture, a business culture. You need your team to be engaged 100% in this project of integrating clear aligners if you want it to work. Patients, patients will ask them if they should do it. If they do not believe in you or in the product or worse, in both, forget it. You might as well refer your case to the nearest dentist who does clear aligners. Your team has to be excited about this. And it is. It will be more fun for them also. Ask my hygienist what they think now. <laughs> what would be their reaction if I would tell them that we stopped using clear aligners? I'm not sure I would survive that decision. The worst thing is when we decide for our patients. We pre-select who is going to do what. We have judgment. When you start judging your patient, you stop caring for them. Ask me why I know this. I, I am not better than others. I did all these mistakes, all of them. It's not a problem to make mistakes. It's a problem when you don't learn from them. 
I stopped deciding for my patients. I approached them all the same, all the same way. I approached them with a rule, and some would say they use a golden rule. I treat everybody like I would like to be treated. I used to do that. Now I use the clear rule. I treat everybody like they would like to be treated. It doesn't mean that my patients want to be treated like I would want to be treated. I am not treating myself, I am treating them. They are paying for the service, not me. Ask yourself or ask them how they want to be treated. What is important to them? And be careful not to talk too much. All these reasons that could be stopping us from having success with this integration of tier aligners brings me back to the three things you need to achieve the success. If you are serious in your decision and your ambition, you will need technology, people, and objectives. That's it. There's the recipe. That's all. That's all for today. Thanks. What? 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 What do I mean by all that? I, I, I don't... Do, do we have the time? Yeah, okay. Okay, let's go. Let's take them one at a time. Technology. Everything today is about technology. Your patients are aware of that. If you want to be serious with clear aligners, you have to consider buying a digital scanner impression system. Every year, the Dental Industry of Canada makes a survey across the country and asks questions to dentists. They produce a report, and in this report, they stated that the number one piece of technology dentists were planning to buy in the next two years is a digital scanner. More than 45% of dentists plan to increase the Invisalign offer in their clinic, and they also found that dentists will refer less and less to orthodontists. All because of clear liners. It is a major shift in dentistry. It was a revolution 20 years ago. It's not anymore. It is the present. But in order to differentiate yourself, in order to compete, in order to wow your patient, you need this piece of technology. Let's look at how things usually are with a regular patient. Let's take this patient. Let's, let's call her Julie. Because it's, it's her name. She, she's Julie. Now, Julie is the best patient in the world. She's always there, always present. She comes always on time. She's been a patient of yours for more than 15 years. All her family comes. She refers patient. Uh, you know you will have always a good conversation. She's smart. She's clever. She's fun. I'll stop there because I, I think I'll marry her. Now, she's in for a recall and cleaning exam. And you have to tell her something. But... Compared to last time, you're not sure if the teeth have moved, if the gums uh, have receded, if the teeth have more wear. How do you measure that? But you have to say something, so you start. And you want to educate her. And she's nice. She's nice. So she likes you and she listens to you. What is the average attention span of people? It's about 7 to 10 seconds. And this is in the ideal conditions. The dental space, the chair, the office might be ideal to you, but not for your patients. But she listens and you go in. And Judy, I think that maybe your gums are receding. And, and she starts thinking of her dinner and that she has to go get the kids at school. But you continue. And, and also, Judy, there, there's a missing tooth. And, and we could put an implant there. And, 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 and she starts wondering how long you can go like this. But you, you can go for a long time because you know so much. And Judy, Judy, I think also that maybe, maybe you have some tooth wear and, and it can cause some abfraction and your occlusion. And then abfraction? Occlusion? And... and what happens is you lose her. Listen, listen, listen. Do you hear? Do you hear? This is the sound of team members laughing because they know. They saw this before. Because doctors, a lot of times we talk too much. And I say we, not you. 
I am like that too. A lot less than I was. I learned, but it was hard. It is still hard. But I found a way to talk less and to make this a lot more interesting to the patient. Let's say Julie again, and let's pretend she is coming for the same appointment. But now I have a digital scanner like the iTero element in my office. In fact, I have two. And I became quite passionate about it. I must say, but not only me, my team also. Nobody could remove that piece of technology from my office. It changed everything. It changed the way we do our consultation. It increased our case approval of 25%. And we were already doing a lot of cases only because of the way we can now communicate with this. It has all the tools to help diagnose and communicate to your patients. I won't do the whole presentation on the iTero here because only with that we would have for more than an hour. It's something we cover in the Mocha 101 course. And that will also be available as a module on our upcoming e-learning platform. But with it, you can see and measure tooth wear, tooth movement, gums recession. You can make a simulation that you can show and send your patient. This is like having a GPS in your office. It is your dental general practice solution. With it, you can visualize better, you can educate better, you can preserve better, align and restore. It is not just for Invisalign. In fact, in my opinion, I don't care if you're doing Invisalign or not. This is a diagnostic tool. It should be standard of care. Knowing it exists and it can measure things that the you and I can't, things that play a role in short, medium or long-term oral and dental health on my patient, I mean, that's a good enough reason to possess one, at least one. It changed my practice and I encourage you, if you are hesitating, to ask any dentist who bought one if they would return it. I've traveled everywhere. I've met and I, I don't know how many dentists that bought one and never, ever did I heard that someone would return it or regretted their investment. Because this is what it is, an investment. You pay for something that will make you make more money, that will make you a better dentist. This is a perfect example of a win-win. In fact, it's a win-win-win because you win, the patient wins, and a line wins also. My goal, and it already happened with some, even with some of you present here today, my goal is that when I meet you in the future, that you can tell me that this was the best advice you got in the last years. My goal with you is to build a long-term relationship, like your goal with your patient. I will not lose my name and, and my reputation for something like this or something I don't believe in. But again, don't ask me. Ask any dentist who bought one and used it for some time and got through the learning curve and you will see. Don't look at how much it costs. This is not how we run a business. Look at what you are losing because you don't have one, especially if you want to do some aligner cases. And they are profitable, clear aligners. If you didn't see our last webinar, I explained how profitable they are. You can listen to it on our YouTube channel. And why not subscribe at the same time? Okay, we have the technology. Next thing we need is people. By people, I mean the team, of course. Like I was telling earlier, they are a key element of success. Everyone has to know their role and everyone has to understand what the role of everyone is. If someone doesn't do what they are supposed to, it undoes what everybody else is trying to do. They have to understand that and they have to put a smile on their face. And you too, doctor. When you are in the clinic in front of patients, it is showtime. Because if your patients are welcome like this, there's a good chance that even if you are superstars in the back office, the image, the first impression will be, what do you want? Look what a spy can do to you and change completely your face, your whole expression. But even, even if you are all doing everything perfectly as a team, Something is missing. Who is the most important people in the office? 
we are missing the most important people, your patients. What is interesting about our situation is that our patient, they chose us. They like us. They like our clinic. They like our team. They like the place. They are used to us. Changing dentists is one of the most stressful things for someone. The relation we have with our patient is intimate. And now, more than ever because of the COVID situation, your patient will want to stay with you even more. What will be important for them is to feel secure. You must create a safe environment for them. And for the first time in my career, because I don't know for you, but for me, it's my first pandemic. For the first time, if my patient feels safe and they see that our sterilization protocols are over their expectations, this will become a new vector for reference. It never was the case before. It was not even an issue, not even something that was discussed. It, it was obvious and evident that we were always careful about disinfection and sterilization. We were good before. We're going to be even better after. Now, we have the technology. We have the people. Everyone knows how to use the technology. Everyone knows what everybody is supposed to do. And everyone accepts that with a smile. In order to keep track and to really know where we're going and that we don't get lost on the way to success, we need our third ingredient, objectives. Why do you need objectives? To be able to follow up, to be able to measure your results compared to your goal. Now a goal without a plan is just a dream. I don't want you to be a dreamer. This is not a dream. You will not wake up at the end of this video in your bed. Well, maybe, but that's, that's another story. <sighs> Objectives are good for you, but they are important to your team also. Just imagine at your next meeting, you tell your team, I saw this great webinar. It was so good. The guy giving it, he was sharp. He was brilliant, extremely good looking. But then I saw another one on the step-by-step -step to integrate clear aligners in the clinic and yeah, yeah we're going to do it. Haha, <laughs> very funny. So let's pretend you tell them my objectives is to do some Invisalign now and you're all proud and happy and excited. Well, for Mary, maybe this means you want to do one case a month. For Julie, maybe it means you want to do one case a week. And for Susie, maybe it's one case a year. Keep Julie. Do not let any space for interpretation. Same thing as when you fill a prescription for Invisalign. Another issue. We'll cover that in other courses. You have to be specific for them to understand what you need, where you are going. How do you find your objectives? Well, the important thing about objectives is they need to be smart. They need to be smart, meaning they need to be simple. They need to be measurable. They need to be uh, accessible and ambitious. They need to be realist and they need to be time specific. Meaning, don't make this complicated. Simple means simple. For example, Simple objective. I want to do some Invisalign cases. That is, that is simple. It's clear. We know what you're talking about. But remember Mary, Julie, and Susie. They have completely different views. This is why you need your objectives to be measurable. You have to put a number. You have to put the number next to it. So for example, you want to do Invisalign. That's good. I want to do some Invisalign cases. I want to do 25 cases. That is clear. Now, Julie, Mary, Susie, they know exactly what you're talking about and how many cases you want to do. Mary thinks it's 25 cases per month. Julie, 25 cases per week. And Susie, well, Susie thinks it's 25 cases till you retire. Again, keep Julie. Your objectives needs to be ambitious. Yes, 25 cases a year, if you never did any clear on all your cases before, is a good objective. It's, it's ambitious enough, yet realist. 
Um, it's, it's two cases a month and three cases for the month you're really fired up. 25 cases a week or a month is certainly ambitious, but it's not accessible and not realist. You will not, you will not achieve it. You will be discouraged. Uh, you will discourage your team and soon enough you will all abandon the idea of uh, succeeding in this. By setting it to 25 cases a year, we add the time-specific issue. Now it's clear for everyone, including Susie. Perfect! What do we do from there? We reevaluate in a year? No! You have to evaluate your results and your objectives after a certain period. And, and depending on what you see, you may need to revise your objectives. That means that you could decide that finally, you're easily starting three cases a month. Then do not keep your objectives to 25 cases a year. Objectives are not really meant to be met. Ideally, you would always fall a little under it. If you make them too easy, you will not be motivated. If you can reach them with your two fingers in your nose or in Susie's nose, it means you're not working to your full potential. Especially when you're starting, you cannot rely on any data or metrics, so you have to choose a number. For a general dentist, 25 cases for a first year makes sense. Think of all the patients you see in a week. But careful, it doesn't mean you have to talk about Invisalign to only two patients every week. No, 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 no. The best practices out there have a case start average of 20%, meaning that 20% of the people they talk about the airliners will eventually start the case. And this is a well-oiled organization. You are starting. You have to talk about it to every patient. It's the only way you can succeed. What makes sense for a general dentist could look like this. I suggest starting with 25 cases a year as your objective and adjust every three months. This is realist for a general dentist. What you see in yellow is what we consider accessible and realist for general practices. It doesn't mean you cannot do more, but if you reach that, I tell you that this will completely change your practice. You start with one case and with some time and effort, before you realize it, you will become a reference for patients in clear aligners. You have to believe it, to, to learn it, and to practice it. You need, you need to follow that learning curve. Accept that it takes time. But it's like riding a bicycle. Once you got it, you're done for life. There's a good chance you will want to continue to do other things you like to do. And I, I encourage it. Invisalign has to be a part of your day-to-day -day general dentistry. Our vision at the Clear Institute is that it becomes so common that you and your team will be as comfortable talking and using it as you are with any regular treatment you are performing in your office. It should not be a special day when you start an Invisalign case. No more than when you do some bonding. We want it to be a day-to-day -day common procedure. General dentists want to be challenged. They enjoy it. They do crazy things and general dentistry has never been more interesting and more challenging. Like my friend Dr. Jerry Sampson says in our three parts podcast discussion, general dentistry is today the most difficult specialty there is. Now I'm not the one saying it, he is, and he has two specialties, pediatric dentistry and orthodontics. He knows what he's talking about. One last thing about objectives. Do not have too much objectives. If you come to 25 different objectives at your meeting and you want to start this and that and this and do this and that and that and by the way, why not this too? You will lose everyone and you will lose yourself too. One of the main reasons why people do not reach their objectives is because they have too much objectives. Too much at the same time. They're not specific. They're not measurable. They're not clearly time-specific. Now, I explained to you how to be specific, how to have them measurable, accessible, ambitious, how to measure them in time. Remember then to keep it simple. No more than three objectives at the same time. 
and for every objectives determine five actions actions could be for example uh, let's say let's say your objectives is to do 25 cases of, of invisalign in the next year actions are what will you do to reach this for example we will have some signs everywhere in the clinic promoting clear aligners another example we will talk about it on our welcoming message on the phone or we will have it added to our website. We will have three specific questions we ask every patient. We will make some Invisalign days, special days where all the focus is on Invisalign and you make it fun. This is how I started. We will invest in an iTero. Now I'm telling you, this is to consider not only for Invisalign. I know everything the integration of Clearliner in your clinic can bring you you will have a direct return on it. But think of all the collaterals. Patient referral is huge with these patients. They, they talk about it on social media. And when you have the chance to have a couple of patients who are influencers, influencers, not manipulators, I mean, they, they can bring tons of new patients to your practice. Do not neglect that possibility. Now, as Michelangelo said, no, no, not, not, not the turtle, the artist. <sighs> the biggest danger for most people is not to have high goals that we don't reach, but rather to have small ones that we reach. There you have it. The steps to a better future, the steps to a successful integration of clear aligners in your practice. Remember, there is a learning curve and it's always easy to stay in our old comfortable shoes. I'm happy to see that you want to step out of your comfort zone and have some fun doing it. I can assure you that I had fun preparing for this webinar and even more fun delivering it to you. Who said that education and dentistry could not be entertaining? Because at the end of the day, it's not about what you did and where you did it. It's about how much fun you had doing it. That is everything I have for you today. My name is Stefan Reinhardt. I'm the Director of Education for the Clear Institute, where dentists make the move. Be safe, take care of your loved ones, and I'll see you around.